to go out with you and enjoy that hour with you. I found Eric Levonicek, and if you don't mind, I'd really like to get back to the States. Go. Well, actually, we need to get back to the States, because you've got somebody to go back to, and so do I. Oh, imagine me, Lenny Andros, flying to Paris in a private jet. Oh, <laughs> oh ooh, I'm sorry. I'm excited. <laughs> this week is going to be so surprised. That's the whole idea now, isn't it? Yeah. I need to make a uh, business phone call. Could you excuse me for Of course, of course. You make your call and I will go check on him and see if it's ready, okay? Uh, El Nico, I will never forget what a good friend you have been. Stop worrying about that. How can I not worry? You know, they might send me back to Greece. No, no, they're not going. 
I mean, it's like a legend of love, Grace. It's my country, you know. It's my home. I have a very special place in my heart for it. But I've come to love America so much. What do you love about the most? I don't know. There's so many things. Um... Uh, okay, hot dogs and hamburgers. And um, a supermarket the size of my entire village. Um, it's good. <laughs> and apples as big as melons. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I think I get the idea. What you love the most about America is obviously the food. No, no, I mean, no, you know what I love most about America? It's the freedom. I mean, at home, my whole life it was planned for me, but here I can, I can do what I want, I can say what I want, I can be whatever I want, you know? I guess we take that for granted here. Oh, I will never take that for granted. Freedom is like a, a blessing from God. It, it is one of the most precious gifts in the world, I'm like, oh. Oh, Alan uh, Michael, I, I worked so hard to come to America. I mean, what if what they won't let me return? I'll let you return. But what about immigration? I mean, they, they might not let me back in. They will. How can you be so sure? Because you're with me. But, uh, you know, you're an American citizen, and I am not. Anything could happen. If there's any problems, I will take care of it. How? With money. <laughs> oh, Michael, you are so funny. I'm being very serious. Money cannot buy everything. It buys the things that count. Oh, yes. Beautiful yachts and, and, and gorgeous decks. No, look, look, not just things, Elaine. Money can buy freedom. <laughs> freedom to do what you want, to say what you want, to be what you want to be. Right? Didn't you just say how precious all of that is to you? Yes. Well, money can buy you freedom from worry, too. And you should never have to worry, you know? Somebody like you who loves life so much. You deserve to be happy you know, all the time. clerk called down said he wanted to go over some charges with me. At this hour? Yeah, I know. Well, anyway, it gives me a chance to get my bill ready. I'm going to check out tomorrow. Go ahead. Well, don't you want to fly back with me? No, not yet. Miss Spaulding, um, how long are you going to stay here like this? I don't know. <sighs> Listen, there's no sense in staying here. I mean, you found out everything you need to know. Yes. I did have twins, two precious little boys, and Eric took both of them away from me. Yeah, that was terrible what he did to you. I didn't protect my children. That wasn't your fault. You don't have children, do you, Frank? No, not yet, but uh, I mean, I've been thinking about it. I carried those babies in me for nine months. I sheltered them, gave them food and air, life. But when they needed me most, I wasn't there for them. To be raised by strangers, to not even know about Nick. You can't blame yourself for that. I'll tell you what, once you go back to Springfield, I bet you're going to feel a whole lot better. Look, you face that house yet. The laundry remind me of what might have been, what should have been. It has have been filled with laughter and joy. The sounds of my sons. When I think how different my life would have been. All those lost years. I can't go back. Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Spaulding? 
what? You still have a son. And he's waiting for you in Springfield. Yes, such 
hard time showing what he feels in his heart, you know? It, it would make him very much like my father was. I mean, my father did not believe in words. It was what you do that counts. And that's how Frankie feels. I mean, it's like when he helped me fix up the diner, or or when he stayed with me all night in the hospital when staff was so sick. You know, Michael, I felt safe and, and protected. And, well, that is... That is how I knew how he felt in his heart. Not by words, but by doing. Frankie, he is... He's a good man. He's an honest man. Yeah, well, I can't argue with that. I didn't mean no, that. No, that's all right. Sorry, going to be very late in Paris. Frank, you'll be sleeping. Oh, no, sure, you've been wanting to wake him up. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Oh, no, sure you can. You're almost engaged, right? Uh, I'm not married. It's just not proper. Well, Abby, hasn't Frank ever woken you up before? I mean, have you ever been woken up by a man? No. Forget that, Alan, Michael, okay? I'm going to go check on dinner and see what she's doing, okay? I'm not making a case, Of course you are. Eric Ivanichek just proved that. I gave birth to him, yes, but that's all I did. I didn't raise him. I wasn't there to watch him take his first steps or teach him his first words. I never comforted him when he was sick wiped away his tears or made him laugh. Another woman had that privilege. Well, you know, uh, my mom wasn't around much either when Harley and I were growing up. Oh, at least you knew who she was. There was a connection. There feels no connection to me, no loyalty. Why don't you give him a chance? He, he loves the woman who raised him. That's the woman he calls mother. That's where his loyalties lie. That's for me. But he doesn't even like me. And why should he? So far, all I seem to have done is cost him pain. Miss Baldwin. How could I ever expect him to love me? Hey, why not? You know, you've got a lot of great qualities. Oh, yes. Let me see, Frank, my good qualities. What is it people say about me? I'm a sure businesswoman, a cruel negotiator. I have a killer's instincts. Hardly the qualities one looks for in a mother, wouldn't you say? How in the world did I ever become so hard? Eric, that's how. He robbed me of more than my sons. He robbed me of my soul. With due respect, Miss Spalding, I think you're looking at this all wrong. Am I? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, thing, things would have been differently if you raised your sons from birth, but you didn't. Why don't you look on the bright side of things? You mean there is one? I think so. A couple days ago, you didn't even know you had another son. And now you found out that you do. I think that's pretty good. It doesn't make up for all the years I left with him. Well, yeah, you're right, well, At least you uh, avoided Nick's terrible twos. <laughs> I'm not so sure he'll probably throw a fit when I tell him. Why don't you look at it as a challenge? Isn't it worth it? None of this. It's not fair. Of course it's not fair, but those years are gone. Don't you think you got a lot of good years to look forward to with Nick now? I mean, you don't want to blow those, do you? No. No, I don't.
about polar bears. What? Set us for two. Why don't we share? Why not? Help me decide. You're the boss. Okay, let's see. You know, why don't we um, ask for one? Terrific idea. What? I didn't want to bring it up for out while we were at the table because you know how fragile men egos can be about that sort of thing. Oh, that sort of thing. Well, how would you like it if I got Nick a job at WSPR? Isn't it interesting how we're all in show business? Well, well, I'm not. Well, you were. You were the star, the product. The product. Oh, that's what they were selling, just like now you're selling yourself here? I like to think that they come here for the food. Hmm, um, perhaps we should order now. Wouldn't have be perfect for sports bloopers? Sports bloopers? Concept for a show, the reason I were batting around. Uh, you don't know how I'm dying to get out of equipment, sir. He meets all the parameters. Age, look, visibility, cool. Look, why, why don't, um... I mean, I really like running a blue moon, you know? And Jilly would be the producer. You stick with me, babe. I'll get you out of this one-horse town. I happen to like this one-horse town. I'm thinking high concept, low overhead here. We could pitch the two of them as a team. A uh, two-for-one kind wait, of deal. Wait, wait, I, I think, um, I'll just go and get us uh, a round of drinks, okay? Big plans for us, babe. You know, I, I think Ham may need a pan with those drinks. I'll be right back. Thanks for inviting Melinda and me to join you tonight. She really missed you for a while, man, you know? Well, I missed her, too. You can't let her feelings stand between you and your family. Yeah. Family means a lot to you, doesn't it? It means everything. I'll tell you, it's the only way you really have of knowing who you are in this world. They to track down the clothing jet. They said Alan Michael took it. I wonder where. Well, I was a commercial jet leaving first thing in the morning, so. Good. I can't wait to get back and talk to Nick. I have so many plans. A uh, bit of advice here? I really wouldn't go too fast with him with this. You know, it's kind of heavy news. You're absolutely right. He'll need time to adjust to the fact that I'm his real mother. I mustn't push him. I wonder how he'd feel about living at the house. I could redo the East Wing for him. That way he'd be close, but still have his privacy. He's pushing it. It's silly for him to live alone when I have that big house and... Okay. You're right. I can't force him. I should have learned that from Lou Jack. Nick definitely inherited his brother's independent streak. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if he took that managing editor job that I offered him on the paper? Wasn't well, he doing freelance work with Fletcher? Yeah, for now, but eventually he wants steady work when he settles down and uh, makes me a grandmother. Imagine that. <laughs> as long as he finds a suitable girl. Oh, um, speaking of girls, they use your phone here like to call mine and tell her I'm coming home. Yeah, go ahead. What's her name? Her name's Elaine. It's pretty, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not going to uh, call her. I'd like to surprise her. I'm going to have to find out what was on that scrap of paper. Oh, what scrap of paper? Nick said it was his birth certificate from San Francisco. Obviously, it was a fake. Maybe you could help uh, that's, me. That's between you and your son. It's so unfair. The boys never met. Nick would have adored you, Jeff. And I think how Eric willfully separated two brothers at birth. But at least I can make sure Eric never comes near Nick again. Yeah, but Eric is Nick's father. And he's bound to ask questions. I tell Nick he's dead. And they want you to back me up. Uh, Miss Falbank, it would. You what? That's not the point. The point is, what if Nick doesn't believe that you're his mom? But he will. I have proof. Your only real proof is Eric. And you may need him. Frankie and I will have a simple life, but a good life. I'm sure you will. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, uh, wait a minute. Don't you think you'd rather have a clear head? I mean, you don't want to miss anything you surprise. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're always so level-headed. <laughs> Alan Michael, you would be the perfect godfather for our first child, if you'd like. We'll see. Uh-oh, oh, we better get ready. Uh-oh. I think we're going to win. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Alan Michael. Oh, it's so exciting. I, I'm just, I know something good is going to happen tonight. I remember one time it was really cold. I mean, sub-zero. And I decided I had to go skating in this tiny, tiny little skating skirt. Because I had to impress some boy. <laughs> huh. It's hard to picture you in that awkward teenage stage. I can't picture as though I never left it. Believe me, it doesn't show. Hey, Dad, why don't you tell her about that time when you were in sixth grade and you almost got frostbite because you didn't wear your ear flap? <laughs> oh, because of some girl. <laughs> Ninja campers are supposed to be snoozing. We're not sleeping. Okay. Maybe some hot chocolate would make us a little sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, I kind of have a feeling we're not going to be able to argue our way out of mm -hmm. this. Having more water? No, but we could melt some snow. Oh. Don't tell me we have to test out our basic survival skills right now. I'll get the pot. You get the shovel. You first. No, you first. Nice cologne John's wearing. Yeah, the stuff smells like wax cripple. <laughs> well... Unlike your personality. Oh, me. Mm. Mm, has a wonderful personality. If you think glittering eyelashes is a personality. Love it. <laughs> Louise has always insisted. The only reason she got into our sorority is because its parents gave an enormous grant to the university. Oh, rich and sexy. Louise sounds like my dream girl. Thank you. 
Will you give me his room? Uh, well, who are you then? Who is that? Who are you? We are friends of Frank's. What are you doing here? Waiting for Frank, of course. We can all wait together. about you trying to impress some little girl when you were, what, in sixth grade, all of 12 years old? Eleven. I bet you were a pretty cute little boy, especially when you were wearing those earplugs. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget what you did tonight, saving my son's life. Be with us tomorrow for another full hour of guiding light.